What's up, losers? KD3 here. Have you seen other players doing way more damage than you and wondered how the heck they were doing it? There's actually quite a few factors that go into how much damage you're able to do. And once I go over each method, you'll be doing the big boy damage and shredding those bosses in no time. With my vision, I'll guide you all to victory. Sounds great! I'll be listing off the methods in the order that they actually become accessible for people who may still be at the start of the game. The first way to deal more damage is by getting the hang of the combat system. When battling, the goal is to knock the enemy down. There's three ways we can go about doing that. The most obvious method is by exploiting an enemy's weakness, which requires some trial and error. Second method is by getting a critical, which can be easier to do by using crit rate boosting skills. The third, and in my opinion the easiest way to get a knockdown, is to land a technical hit. To land a technical hit, you must first inflict an ailment on an enemy, then hit them with a certain type of attack while they are inflicted with that ailment. The best ailment Ailments to inflict are sleep and dizzy since any type of damage can lead to the knockdown. On actually gets a skill really early in the game called Dormina which has a high chance of putting an enemy to sleep that you can use to easily get that extra damage. The downside of technicals is that you start with a 50% chance of knocking down enemies. But if you go to Kichijoji to play billboards, you can increase your odds to 100 if you reach rank 4, as well as increasing the damage that your technical hits can do. If you'd like a guide to max your technical rank, I just happen to have one right here. If you'd like to boost your damage even further from there, you can try switching the game to Merciless difficulty. I know that sounds insane, but Merciless difficulty rewards players that have a grip on the combat pretty favorably, since weaknesses, criticals, and technical hits will do three times the damage, making some fights even easier than they were on the easier difficulties. When you knock down enemies, you get another turn. You can boost your damage by using Baton Pass to give one of your party members a boost. If you can use the combat to your advantage and exploit a weakness, get a critical hit, or land a technical, you can baton pass again to get an even bigger power boost. This is the main way that the game wants you to get your damage, and it shows during certain battles in the game. Like technicals, you can boost the power of baton pass as well by playing darts with your friends in Kichi Joji. Each party member's rank goes up to 3, so the higher it goes, the more damage that they can do. It also has the added benefits of HP and SP recovery. The fastest way to get each party member to rank 3 with baton pass is to let them win the dart game for you, because when they win the game, they rank up twice instead of once. It's best to save before playing darts just in case you only get one rank up or lose the game outright. That way you can reload the save and try again to save time. The most common reason most players miss out on a lot of damage even though they have the most powerful personas is because they neglect their personas. What I mean by this is that they pay little to no attention to the persona's stats, skills, or traits, then act like they're supposed to do a lot of damage just because the persona has a high level. That's not how this works. If your personas don't have the setup to match, there's no way you'll get the outcome that you want. I'm going to break down how to boost your stats as well as use your skills and traits to boost your damage to go even further beyond. Let's look at your stats first. There's actually two ways that we can go about getting higher stats for a persona. The first is to burn incense while having a persona on lockdown. You can find incense from Disaster Shadows, buying them from Jose, or by buying some in Kichi Joji. This method works, but it's pretty slow and gives small gains. So what about the second method? Once you secure the route to the fourth path, Palace, you unlock the gallows which will allow you to sacrifice a persona to make another one stronger by giving it experience. There are many factors that go into how much EXP the persona receiving the boost will get. Factors include the persona's level, whether the persona share the same arcana or not, the associated confidence level, if the sacrificed persona is a treasure demon or not, if the sacrificed persona is a mutation persona, more on that later, and if the gallows is being used during a fusion alarm. When the persona's level increases, some of its stats will go up as well. There are a couple of issues with this method though. First of all, you can only strengthen each persona once per day, so if you did this normally, it would take a lot of time. Thankfully, there is a workaround. If you register the persona after it's been strengthened, remove it from your party, then buy it from the compendium again, you can strengthen it again. Just be warned that this is an expensive workaround, so make sure you have the money, and remember to register the persona every time you strengthen it. This is where the second issue comes in. Let's say you get a persona to level 99. Can you continue to strengthen it? The answer is no, because stat boosts only have happen through level ups. You could try going back to burn incense. If you do it during an alarm, its effects will double, but this is still a lengthy process with little reward. So what can we do about this? Thankfully the fusion alarm gives us another workaround to potentially max all of our persona stats. The method is fairly simple too. All you have to do is wait for an alarm to occur. Then head to the velvet room. Fuse any two personas together, preferably low level ones. Its name will be highlighted in yellow to show that it was made during an alarm.
arm. Once it's made, use it to strengthen the persona you want the boosts on. This is pretty much guaranteed to fail since you're using a persona that was already made during an alarm, and doing this dramatically increases the odds of failure. But this is exactly what we want, because the result of the failure is 10 points distributed across the persona stats with no EXP gain. This means you can keep doing this until the persona reaches 99 and the desired stats are all the stats if you want. Even if maxing the stats isn't your goal, don't underestimate how much these stat increases help with battles. Now your stats may be maxed, but your damage potential is not. We still have your skills and traits to go over, so let's look at your skills next. I'll show you one of my personas and break down where the damage comes from. Here we have Izanagi no Okami. I know it's a DLC persona, but its setup makes it really easy to explain things. First, you'll notice that I have Almighty Boost and Almighty Amp. A lot of people don't know this, but you can stack these to get a big increase in damage. The skill magic ability also boosts the damage even further. These three skills have to be obtained through network fusion, but regular elemental boosts and amps can be obtained through regular means. Skills like Concentrate and Auto Mataru Kaja help increase the damage further. I keep skills like that on my Orpheus so I can pass this damage boost to stronger personas while also saving their slots for other helpful skills. So the formula for boosting damage with skills is simple. If you're using magic, use amps and boosts for your preferred element. Get concentrate in Taru Kaja, Mataru Kaja, Auto Mataru Kaja if possible. I prefer Auto Mataru Kaja. For physical personas, just have charge in Taru Kaja, Mataru Kaja, Auto Mataru Kaja. Having Auto Mataru Kaja would be ideal since it boosts the whole party. How do we get these skills? There's a couple things we can do. You can level up the personas that have the skills you want to have another persona inherit them later through fusion or the gallows. Pro tip, if you want a persona to inherit a certain skill from strengthening, you can save first, then reload if you don't get the desired skill. You can also itemize personas to get a desired skill card. Pressing R2 when looking at the compendium shows you what skill card they can give. It's best to itemize during a fusion alarm to get a better skill card. A general rule is that if a persona gives an elemental boost skill card, they usually give the amp skill card during the alarm. Finally, let's move on to your traits. Traits are very straightforward. Let's check out my Izanagi no Okami again. One reason this persona can dish out so much damage is because its trait Country Maker boosts my damage and reduces the damage I take based on my compendion's completion. So having most of it done dramatically increases my damage and reduces the damage I take. There's all types of traits that boost your damage under certain conditions. Make sure you find one that benefits your persona the best in that moment. You may want a trait that increases the chances of ailments being inflicted so you can land your technical and get some extra baton pass damage. Maybe you just want extra baton pass damage period. Maybe you want to boost your critical hit chances. Don't neglect your traits and make sure you combine all of these methods to do massive damage. Alright, that's pretty much everything I can do to help you increase your own damage output, but uh, aren't you forgetting someone? Your party members, duh. You thought you were the only one that could get stronger? If you get a Ketchy's Confidant to rank 4, you unlock a Jazz Bar in Kichi Joji. Bringing your party members here can give them stat boosts depending on what day you take them. When a Life Singer is present, the effect is doubled, and on Sundays, your party members can obtain new skills, some being very powerful, so don't neglect them. There's no I in team for like 1% of the game. Look, you're gonna need them, alright? If you need help with anything else, make sure you check out my playlist for even more Persona 5 guides, or join my Discord server where you can get help in real time. You can even request for me to make a certain type of video for you. If you need any help at all, make sure you check out that Discord.